What's up guys? This is it for the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull figures. Today we are taking a look, I suppose for the last time, at a Filmation figure and we are taking a look at Modulox. So this one is, I guess a big one literally in terms of this line. There's a lot of plastic going on with this figure. We've got him here in, of course, the standard packaging for the line. Castle Grayskull motif, jaw bridge on the front, you've got some artwork on the sides, and then you've got the He-Man logo on the Starfield in the back. Pop that slip cover off, and then you've got the figure there in the big window, windows on the front, windows on the sides, windows on the top, the whole deal, and then you've got some artwork of him on the back holding his extra head, and then a little bit of a bio. So let's do it, let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is, our final Club Grayskull figure, Modulox. So this guy is interesting, just in the general sense of Masters of the Universe, because of where he came from, his difference between the show and the toy and the mini comics, and just all of that stuff. And I'm really happy to finally get this guy in this form, because I really like the way he looked in the show. Of course, he's really not show accurate this way. He should really just have the one head, but I do like what they did here. And frankly, for a still rather basic figure, they did change some things up enough to make him stand out amongst the crowd. And that's not just because he has two heads and a third leg. So let's take a look, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around first, and then we'll get into all the more interesting bits. So we've got two heads up here to start with. So you've got his normal head, his, his organic head, and then you've got the second head, like the, what do they call it, like the brain drain head or whatever thing that he does with it. And you can move them around. They're on just ball pegs, so pretty standard stuff. They don't really have any bobble, not much up and down either because of how far up that neck goes, but they can rotate. And this thing sits on a ball peg. You can remove it, and we will remove it. Uh, but you can remove it and give him just a singular head if you want. It doesn't really move though because it sits over top of the traps and it basically locks it in place. Arms go out at the shoulder, they rotate. Of course, you've got a bicep swivel, you've got a single jointed elbow, you've got rotating forearms, the cuffs are a separate piece, and then you've only got pegs for the wrist. That's kind of weird. I'm not really sure why they went that route. They are removable and they're intended to be, but that is still kind of limiting. He's got a crunch, so he goes backwards a little bit and he goes forwards a little bit. You do, of course, have this guy right here that gets in the way of things, so you can't really avoid that. We've got a waist twist, and then we get down to the legs. So the legs go all the way out, and all of them go all the way out, so if you want him to do the modulox splits, you can absolutely do that. They kick forward pretty good. The, the normal legs kick backwards pretty good. You've got thigh cut, single jointed knees. He's got no boot cut because he's not wearing boots. And then you do have a rocker down here. They're kind of tight, but it is there. And then you've got hinges at those ankles. Of course, what's different from this side is that you've got a third leg. This thing is different from the front two. It's not a normal leg, so it just hinges back and forth. There's a pin that goes straight through it. There's no rotation here either. And then you've got a ball hinge at the knee. So it really only does this. It's basically just a straight leg and a slight bend. And then you've got the same foot down there at the bottom that's on the other two legs. So he does move pretty well. You know, this guy is not as modular as the classics figure or as the vintage toy because, well, frankly, he wasn't in the show. So he only really does what you see here, but he moves well enough. There are a few things that kind of get in the way, but he does articulate quite well. And I have a lot easier time posing him with multiple legs than I do the classics figure. But then again, you can go up to six legs on that guy. So it does kind of pose a little bit of a problem just to actually get them all to line up. But he does stand really well. And I think he just moves really nicely. No stuck joints. Everything's nice and fluid. Now for the aesthetics, I'd, I'd say as a blanket statement that they absolutely nailed this figure. There is, of course, a thing we can change to make him look more like I want him to. But as far as how he looks out of the box, I really don't have a lot to talk about. I really don't have a lot to complain about. I think he just looks cool. I really dig everything about all of the Modulot character designs. I like him in the comics. I like his I like his vintage toy. I like his I love his classics toy. And I really, really like this figure. This is more often than not the version of Modulok that I think of, the Filmation version, because I really like his character. I love the way he's portrayed in the He-Man cartoon, and then I like him in the She-Ra cartoon. So he's got some interesting stuff going on as far as backstory, where he comes from, and he's just got a really devilish and evil looking design. And that's really what draws me in. This big bright red, well in this case, multi-headed figure, just looks cool. He's got a little bit of paint on him, not too much, and frankly he doesn't need it because, I mean, he's mostly just naked. So you've got the harness which is painted up, and you've got the multi-colors here for the bracers, 
which are a separate piece, so they're not painted. And then you've got the white on the claws, which these things are actually kind of sharp, so watch out for those. And then you've got the white on the claws of the toes. You've got your fins on the back of the ankles and calves. And then you've got the black on the legs, which is all painted pretty cleanly. I don't have any real issues to gripe about there. Blue trunks, and then of course the green stripe for the waistband. So he's got some size to him. He's got a very imposing shelf presence. And I mean, come on, he looks cool. He's a big three-legged monster. What really more could you ask for? Well, I suppose you can ask for an extra head. So we've got the, the extra, like the robotic head. So this is his standard organic head and this is the robotic one and you can see they're they're similar in overall style but then they have very different paint applications so you've got the purple and the yellow and then the closed mouth with the fangs popping out and whatever these little doodads are supposed to be this is always my preferred head sculpt for modulock regardless of, of entity version whatever figure you want to talk about i love this head sculpt and i love it in the filmation show and i think they translated it to plastic really well i do think the neck adapter thing here is maybe a little too bulky. It looks like it's just too wide to me. I feel like it could be a little wider and maybe a little shorter in some respects, but it does work pretty well and it definitely hoists those two heads up. Although for my money, you know, I would pop that off and then put just this guy on because for me, this is how he should look and this is how I plan to probably always display him going forward because this to me is what he should look like out of the filmation show and of course while you have the option to do this this is more appropriate now as far as accessories modulock has a handful he doesn't have nearly as many as say the vintage figure or classics because that is not what this character does he is not modular in the sense that he can rebuild himself at will out of a million parts to be the beast of a thousand bodies or whatever in the world they called him. And that's fine. They had to do whatever they had to do in the show to be able to reuse animation. So being able to switch his parts willy nilly was not, was not something Filmation was really able to do. So to start with, we have got some extra hands and these are kind of interesting because I'm not sure why he has them. They're just slightly different. So instead of having the more more aggressive looking hands, you've got maybe some more neutral hands. He can't do anything with them. It's not like you're gonna be gripping anything with these, but you've got some standard hands rather than the more open palm, maybe fighting pose kind of hands. So you do have a little bit of an option there. And then we've got some actual weaponry. So he could change his shape in the show and he could manifest some weaponry. So you've got the, uh, the electrode like laser ray kind of gun. And what you do with these is you just pop the, uh, the hands off and then you can pop these on. So that's why they have such a different peg system for the hands and why it's just a peg versus, you know, a hinge in a peg, I assume. So you've got the big electrode goofy weapon there. And then equally as goofy, obviously, you've got the big hammer piece that you can do the same thing with, pop the hand off and put this on. No paint on this, just a big red piece of plastic. This has paint on the end. So he has a few things and these are, honestly, these are the things that I remember the most out of the show. And I'm pretty sure he uses them back to back in a lot of cases, especially one episode. Uh, he bashes through a wall and then he transforms into this and starts, starts blasting. So you do have a handful of things you can use and he does come with pretty much everything you really need. Now, of course, we have to do some kind of comparison here because, well, we have a classics figure to talk about and it's kind of difficult to do a comparison for this one because they're, they are so similar, but at the same time, they're so, so different. The idea is definitely the same when it comes to overall approach and kind of character design, but at the same time, they're very different because this guy is this guy. He's meant to be a three-legged version of this character who doesn't change all that much. This guy is meant to be highly modular, highly customizable, and definitely more about the play value of an action figure. So you can see just what those two different approaches really get you. That said, I still think this is always my favorite. It's just the version I always think of when I think of Modulock, but I love, love, love this toy. I think it's so cool and all the stuff you can do with it. Of course, they both have, again, those extra head sculpts and they very much kind of reflect the same thing. You can see they're quite similar, but of course they're still quite different. And that goes with this, the same thing with the other figures. So you've got, you know, three legs on this guy. I've got four legs on this guy right now. You can go up to six. You can have, you know, arms coming out of his butt. You can have legs coming out of his head. You can do whatever you want with this figure. Whereas this guy's a lot more locked down, but you can see just how similar, but how far they diverge when it comes to what you can really do with these toys. So overall, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of this character. I'm a big fan of his previous figure incarnations, and I'm a big fan of this figure. 
I do think that, you know, for my money, the way he needs to be displayed is with the standard head, just to be as accurate as possible. But this whole package is really nice. I do think, again, that the, the neck adapter is a little big in some ways, but it's really not bothersome. And the rest of the figure is just fantastic. He looks cool, he's menacing, he looks really evil, he moves pretty well, he comes with good accessories, and at the end of the day, I'll do just about anything to get another Filmation Horde character. And thankfully we got him, of course, not so thankfully this is the end. For now, I suppose, probably forever, I would imagine. But this is definitely a high note for this particular wave for me. I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. And at the end of the day, he just looks like he jumped right out of the show. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull Modulock. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.